one two one two one two one two. All right, we're back at it again, and um, this is going to be a pretty quick one. Just wanted to, you know, just kind of go into why we as black people are in such a well. Not, not, I won't even say just black people. We're like the we're like the barometer of how bad things are, but really everybody how America how America American the American public was pushed into further debt. Uh for this to to understand this, we gotta go back to uh the presidency of Ronald Reagan. Um under Reaganomics Yeah, under Reaganomics, um, a lot of educational programs were cut. Now, we say, what would uh, effect did that have? Okay, well, let's get into it. Uh, when Ronald Reagan came into office, the government was spending a lot of money on educational programs. So, because they understood that a lot of Children were what they call, we used to call them latchkey kids. I was a latchkey kid myself. I had a key around my neck and a shoestring around my neck. And, uh, excuse me there. Uh, So when you got out of school, you had to walk home and you had to let yourself in because everybody was at work. So I had to let myself in. Um, So, uh, you know, we were like we were called what they call latchkey kids. So, since the parents weren't there, the government tried to help that situation by having programming on that engaged children until the parents got home. I remember having there was there was um, programming that you turned when you came in. They were doing homework. You could you could call in. And they would be doing homework live, at least out here in L.A. They had a PBS, a public broadcasting uh, system. And they would, uh, or KCET. Yeah, the yeah, so they would have uh, KCET, and uh, they would have a call-in program. You could call in to the show on TV, and uh, they would do your homework program. They would do, they would do your homework problem for you. Live on TV, I, I remember that. Um, they also had programs like Sesame Street, The Electric Company, Three Two One Contact, um, just a bunch of different shows that kind of engaged children until the parents came home. But it was at the same time they were teaching how to uh, learning and different. Uh, math and science skills and so um that's what it was all about at that time when mr reagan came into office uh, like i said yeah when uh, mr reagan came into office so the effect the effect now like i said reagan came in and just made made sweeping cuts everywhere I mean, he cut a lot of government programs. He felt that uh, the government didn't have to, shouldn't have to help you. Because um, kind of like Trump felt like if we help you too much, you're not going to be able to go out and uh, help yourself. You're not going to be motivated to help yourself. You're not going to be motivated to uh, help yourself. So, um, sorry about that. I slipped on one of those levels there. Um, so Trump, so Trump and Reagan kind of had the same feel. Now, as far as as far as education go, because really, I want to show the effect of the Reagan administration and how the um, the uh, average uh, the average annual income of 
the average American started going down. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in uh, in the eighties, when we were coming up in the eighties and the uh, early nineties, uh, they had classes in high school called home economics. They had a class called home economics. They had, an, they had another class called political science. And these were mandatory classes at the time. Uh, you know, uh, well, I wouldn't say the early 90s because Reagan had probably killed all that by the 90s. So let's say the 80s. Um, these were, you know, you had to take those classes to graduate. Uh, of course, the Reagan administration defunded a lot of the educational programs. So schools had to make cuts where they could. And some of the things they cut was home economics and, of course, political science uh, classes. Now, in political science, we were taught how the American politics works. We were taught how it works. We were taught about lobbyists. We were taught about, we were taught about filibustering. We were taught about gerrymandering. We were taught about these things. So you knew where, where you were at least educated a little bit on how uh, the process worked in American politics, whereas today the many of the American people don't even understand how American politics works and the wheels behind the wheels. They don't even understand what a lobbyist can do and what gerrymandering is and what um, filibustering is. They don't understand any of that. They feel like voting is going to be the answer. If I vote, then that's that they don't understand how the American people are misguided and misdirected and over um, just basically programs to benefit uh, elite elitists. Uh, so, um, but getting back to the Reagan administration, they cut all these programs. So the people now don't have coming out of high school don't have the understanding of how American politics works. On top of that, there used to be a class called home economics. You had to have both of these classes to graduate. Home economics. Oh, you know what? I think it might have been either, either political science or history or both. But I remember political science. You had to have, you had to, anyway, let me finish with, uh, let me finish with the, uh, uh, home economics. So home economics. Uh, I don't know if some of y'all are old enough. They're old enough like me, where we, you know, they taught you how to cook a little bit. You had to, you know, you you made the little um, the 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 what's the with the the, the the Doritos in the in the in the oven with the cheese on them. You made those. Um, you learned how to cook a little bit. You learned how to budget your money. They taught you how to do all of that with little exercises and different things like that. They taught you about responsibility and having a family. and You had to carry a little egg around. I mean, it was a lot of different lessons that they taught to open up your eyes to the reality of what was coming down the pike at you. Nowadays, our children are not being, if they're not given that education at home, which a lot of them probably are not, then they're out in the street getting that education or not getting that education and they find out when it hits them in the face so we had those two things going on the defunding of educational programs it really hurt uh, what what is called the minority communities but actually community or communities of color but let's just call it what it is black people and everybody else that's really not elite Anglo. It even hurt uh, poor white people. So we're going to say the elite and Anglo, that's who it really didn't affect actually putting money in their pocket because they could now manipulate the people based on their misunderstanding of how uh, the, the American politics works. And then they could also manipulate the people based on their misunderstanding of how debt works. They could send, keep throwing them credit cards and keep getting them further in debt and further in debt, driving this wheel, uh, making 
the people who own these credit card companies richer and richer and richer because they just sell their debt. They just sell it to somebody and let somebody else uh, recover it. They've already made their money off of it. But anyway, and why? It's nothing anyway. It's just the debt. It's not, it's nothing. <laughs> they can sell it just like uh just like on uh, Goodfellas, you know, they 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 get a whole bunch of stuff in somebody else's name and then they just when they when they can't borrow any more money to sell it out the back door, they just burn the place down. So that's what they do. They just sell the debt when they can't get it extracted anymore. They just sell it. But anyway, um now, something else happened in the eighties that kind of made that uh that exacerbated the situation as well, and that was the uh crack epidemic. The crack epidemic came in and really exacerbated the situation. So now we have political science missing from the school curriculum so the American people can't know or not can't, but don't have um a full education by the time they graduate high school of how American politics works, the engine behind the engine. Then you don't have, they cut the um, home economics where they taught you how to budget your money, how to get a job, how to, how to um, deal with family situations, how to cook a little bit, how to sew a little bit. I'm talking about men and women, how to sew a little bit, how to iron and iron your clothes. They taught you just basic things that you would need to live on your own. All right. So during this uh, time, the crack epidemic was introduced to the uh, main, it started out in the black community, but it ultimately when uh, Ronald Reagan's wife, Nancy, got involved. Just say no to drugs. <laughs> uh, that's what basically uh, was her program, was just say no. But like I said, it had to hit other than the black neighborhoods before she actually got involved. Once she got involved, then, then um, it became kind of like um, a uh, national phenomenon. But anyway, back to the effect of the Reagan administration on the people. So the people became more in debt because they didn't know how to navigate through. And this is what the credit card companies and the, the, the billion-dollar families that own those credit card companies wanted. They don't want you to know how to budget your money. They want you always in an emotional state and just to get excited. That's why you see TV ads that, uh, well, not TV ads, but any kind of ad advertising. They try to they try to get you emotionally aroused so that you will be motivated because they know when you're emotionally aroused, you're not going to de- think about, hmm, I need to get food. I don't need to spend three hundred dollars on some Jordans. I need some food for the household, but because they can get you all aroused, you go ahead and spend it three hundred dollars on Jordans or four hundred, five hundred, whatever it is, whatever Jordans, how much Jordans cost, or whatever, whatever shoe. I'm just nothing against Jordan. Just just saying how we as black people think about it. Um, whatever it is, the 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 item. So whatever the item is, we buy it. And then now we're gonna we'll figure out how to feed our family or pay those bills or whatever. And we were taught better than that in home economics. Same thing, political science, you vote. They say, Rock the vote, rock the vote. So you vote. And you think by voting that's going to alleviate some of these problems. But in actuality, there's always a group of people <laughs> that are gonna be um, benefit from the voting, but typically not black people. You're not going to benefit from voting. And um, I've explained this on many videos, and the one who really can explain this is Dr. Claude Anderson. Really made, I mean, they made this a life study for him, and he can really break it down 
but just to give you a, the short version, you can't you can't have uh, political power without economic power. If you don't have the economics behind the politics, the, the, the politics, then you will be what they call just a swing vote, and people will get you all excited to make a swing vote, but you're not going to get anything out of it. For example. People, there were certain people that wanted Barack Obama in, in in office. And most of us black people, we wanted Barack Obama in office. We kind of understood that he was going up against many dragons. And all he had was an ink pen to fight them. So we didn't expect, well, most of us that were rational, we didn't expect him to go up there and rewrite the whole thing for black people. We didn't expect that. We were really wanted to make a statement to our younger people saying that it's possible to change things. It's possible if you have unity and harmony and a a specific goal, which the specific goal was to get him in office. So we all rallied around that, a specific goal. And then, boom, that's what we did. However, people will say, man, Black Obama, he didn't do nothing for black people. He ain't do nothing for black people. And I used to be one of those people. I used to be one of those people that said, you know, Barack Obama, man, he ain't do nothing. He ain't do nothing. But then one day I thought about it. I said, man, you know, this dude went up there by himself. By himself. By himself. And that's what we do as black people, man. We send champions in to fight. And we say, we see you, we see you outside. <laughs> we don't even stand behind them, fight with them, or even learn what options they have and how to support them. We just say, go fight for us. And if you come back, we'll clap our hands for you. But if you don't come back or if you come back without the prize, then we're going to say you are a failure. And I don't agree with that. Um, I feel like, you know, he did the best he could with the situation he was dealt with. We weren't there. We were, we left him by himself up there. We left him. And the ones of us that was with him didn't even understand how to actually fight that dragon, fight those dragons up there. So we got to get better with that. We got to do better with that. We can't. We got to stop sending our um, representatives and, and people that we expect to do things for us and and not understanding how the process works. We're not understanding how the process works. Like he, he would always say to people that said, hey, Barack, you're not doing nothing for us. And he would always say, make me. Make me do it. Make me do it. We didn't, us not understanding what that meant. He meant you got to learn how this animal works, this political animal works, so that you can do things to, that would have to force him to do that and force the people to, force the government to have to deal with that but see we in our ignorance didn't understand that we thought uh, i put my ballot in the book i voted for you go up there and rewrite everything (laughs) you know me go paint the white house black but it doesn't work that way it didn't work that way anyway getting back to reagan yeah getting back to reagan so uh, he um, he just defunded. So that was the catalyst. And so now we got to understand that it's up to us, it's up to us to recorrect this situation. We're gonna have to teach in our homes uh, more about political science, how the government really works, how the American government really works. How uh, we gotta have to teach them more about home economics, the things they need to know. Before they step out into that world, can they cook? Can they can they do they do they know how to hygienically take care of themselves? Do they? Uh, I mean, just basic stuff that we take it for granted that they already know, and some of them don't know. A lot of them don't know. Can they make a decision, uh, a logical decision? We're not teaching our children logic because America doesn't work off of logic; it works off of emotion. But you need to be able to make logical decisions. If I sell this rock and I get caught, 
How many years can I do? Is it worth that? No, it's not. Let me go ahead and get something else going on instead. See, we need to be able to make logical decisions, but people are not being taught because, once again, the fathers are not in the home. And the fathers are not in the home because there's a whole strategy behind that to get young black men in prison and get that free labor, to give it away to corporate uh, interests that hire prisoners to do menial tasks and uh, and save money. They don't have to pay for health care because you're paying for it. <laughs> they don't have to pay for health care. you the taxpayer, paying for it. They don't have to pay for uh, their salaries because you the taxpayer. you paying for it. They don't have to pay uh, for their clothes because you're paying for it. you the taxpayer. you paying for it. They don't, you don't have, they don't have to pay for their meals because you paying for it. The taxpayer, you paying for it. So it's a whole scheme behind this. I didn't really want to get deep. I just wanted to talk about how uh, wh- how and why uh, the people got into a really bad situation after the Reagan administration came in. I mean, he did some things to put some money out there. But like I said, it was just paper. Because as you know, the uh, paper dollar here is not backed by any uh any uh precious metal it's not backed by anything it is what they call a fiat currency which means it is not backed by anything the dollar used to be you could go into a bank and get a dollar's worth of gold in exchange for that paper it was it's a it was a note it's not that anymore. It's just a piece of paper now. It's just a piece of paper. And so what the American government tries to do is they try to control the demand, the supply and demand. And if they can control the supply and demand well enough worldwide, then they can keep the value of that dollar at a certain level. And when they want to raise the value of it, they can control, they can deal with the supply and demand. Since they printed, they buy the paper, they, meaning these families, because that's a whole nother stuff. I don't even, let me don't go down that road, because that's a whole, that's another 30, 40 minutes, and I don't want to do that. I want this to be a really short video, like 10 minutes, but I've already went over, I know. But anyway, let me get, let me finish up with Reagan. So Reagan, of course, the 40th president, uh, like I said, pulled that funding for the schools, um, He lowered taxes um, for most of the middle class and upper class. Um, He was president from 1981 to 1989. Uh, Some of the programs he cut, he cut funding for the Children's Television Workshop, which, of course, was Sesame Street, which was funding a lot of different television shows that were teaching children how to read, how to count, how to uh, think, how to just just be uh, a more understanding person of how things work when he cut all of that stuff he said basically you're on your own kind of like trump you're on your own i'm not gonna i'm not gonna have, hold your hand anymore you're on your own if you're not rich it's your fault right basically what they saying to you so i'm not and i'm not i'm not saying that the government should hand feed everyone but if the government did such a job well, put it like this. If you can hand feed Israel and you can hand feed Japan and you can hand feed Venezuela and you can hand feed all these other places, then I think hand feeding us to help us get on our feet and monitoring us to make sure we're doing things because I don't want us to be generationally stuck with that, but at least we should be um, – given the opportunity and the resources to create for ourselves and and build for ourselves so we can get out of the psychological trauma that we're in as far as what happened to us in America and, and, and stop passing down bad habits, bad parenting habits based on uh, slave mentalities that's been passed down. Uh, You know, the, 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 the disorders that come with being a people that have been enslaved for that that period of time and that gruesome of a situation. Anyway, um, 
So the point of all of this is to say that our children are not being taught this way. We need to jump in there and do something about it, those of us that have children at these ages. And if not, we need to help if we can. Each one teach one because starting from, I'm not saying Reagan is the only one, but I'm saying he did the most damage. He had the biggest sword. He did the most damage to educational programs for especially our children. Our being in black children, he did especially. I mean, he he it actually did damage to almost everybody's children except the elite Anglo. Other than that, everybody else got affected by this. So um, it behooves us all to work together to try to fix this. But we have a special and unique problem of the psychological damage done as well as the ignorance. So we have to. We black people have to really work hard to try to jump in there and correct the situation. And in my opinion, voting is not going to get it. We have to come with the economics. We have to start spending money with each other economically to try to correct this problem because voting is not going to help you unless you have an economic base. If you vote, see, when you vote, you have to be able to have an economic base so that if the person doesn't do you say, hey, I want you, we're going to vote for you to put you in office. That person say, the candidate say, okay. And then you say, if you get in office now, this is what we want you to do. This is how American politics works. That's how come people can give a candidate $40 million. But on the back end, they say, okay, well, I'm going to give you this $40 million. If you get in office, this is specifically what we, this is the specific law we want passed. Okay. Well, the black community don't do that, Right. They say stuff. We say very vague things like we want a stop. We want police brutality stopped, or we want less policing, or everything is vague. It's not a. It's not a specific goal, and that's how we get caught. But like I said, that's a whole nother video in itself. Just go out there, try and teach your children to, uh, home economics. Try to teach them how to deal with their. Uh, Teach them about credit. Teach them about um, income and generating income. Teach them about um, how to cook for themselves, how to basically take care of themselves. If they can take care of themselves, they're going to be more attracted to someone else. And then um, uh, then we need, to, we need to learn ourselves. Those of us that don't know how American politics work, we need to learn ourselves so we can break that down to our children so they can see they don't get mis they don't misunderstand when they say hey i voted for this person and this person didn't do nothing for us as black people what happened well you can know what happened because you know how this machine works you can't just send somebody up to especially up to capitol hill and think they're going to do a bunch of stuff for black people that's that's not going to happen unless we as a community are behind them and we display that unified stance behind this person, then then they will say, oh, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, now we got it. Right? All right, anyway, that's my little piece for this morning. Peace.